So when Pastor Buddy said that we were going to be speaking on the kingdom, I was like, wow, that's like, how are we supposed to, that's, that's such a wide variety of things to talk about. Um, what do you pick from? What do you do? What do you look at? Well, I think that was the whole point of him picking that, was that was the whole point. Sometimes the obvious things are really not so obvious. Um, the kingdom really is what? What is the kingdom? I'm asking a, 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 a question to you in the audience. What is the kingdom? From page one to page two describes the kingdom. <clears throat> Most Christians have asked what Jesus' message is, is this, if they are able to answer at all, they answer by taking, talking about how God loves us deeply, how we need forgiveness from God, how God forgives us by his grace and through our faith, in Jesus' death on the cross, which pays for the off offenses of all our sins. If you think about it, this is really a great answer. Except what it really is, is a message about Jesus. If you were to boil down Jesus' message to us, as believers in a couple of words. It's simply, today's message is, what's Jesus' secret? Jesus' secret message. So what is Jesus' secret message? Can anybody tell me? Is it something that's lost? Is it a really, is it really, is it, is it a secret? Is it hidden by some conspiracy? Is it hidden in the pages of the Bible that only people, only certain people can read? No. Only certain people can understand? Jesus' secret, secret message is the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Now what does that phrase mean? The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Well, where are my hands? They're at my side. So where's the kingdom of heaven? It's all around us. It really is all around us. The kingdom of heaven isn't just up in heaven. The kingdom of heaven is now, is today. But sometimes we miss that. We miss that it's right now, it's right present, it's right here. It could be from, like I said, in the, from the beginning, from the beginning of the book, Adam and Eve, to um, Noah, to the sanctity of God's kingdom in Deuteronomy, in Deuteronomy 21 through 25. It's all about the kingdom. It's all about God's kingdom. The Psalms really are all about the supreme kingship of Yahweh in which the man and every living creature is under one kingdom. We are due to be dependent and responsible to God's kingdom. Repentance. The act or process of repenting, especially for misleads or moral shortcomings. John the Baptist came preaching repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. From, from that time, Jesus began preaching, saying, Repent, for the kingdom, of his, it, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. John the Baptist started preaching that. Jesus, when he started preaching, started preaching, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. That's not a quinkadink. Confession of sin is common, but repentance of sin is very rare. To be the truly repentant, and I, and I say quinkadink, and I hear people laugh. I can't say the other word. So that's why I have to say quinkadink. Confessions of sin is common, but repentance of sin is rare. Jesus never meant for repentance to take a long time. But rebellion, justification, can last a lifetime. Jesus provided the only way to eradicate sin, and this provision is accessed through repentance. Ignoring sin will only prolong the process. There are really five steps to true repentance. And I don't know where I read this at, but it, I, it, I've had this for a long time. And I, I can't give the credit to somebody, but it's to somebody. Um, so we're going to go through the five steps of repentance. Um, step one, God, I am wrong. God, I'm wrong, regardless of what anyone else has done. Don't add the but. 
you'll only be trying to justify. Let's start with our short story. Dad, I have not cleaned my room in 365 days. I know it's wrong. You taught me better. See you later. I'm going to the, I'm going to the beach. Step two. God, I'm sorry for my sin. Dad, we've always had a great relationship. We can talk about anything. I can tell you there was some tension between us. I want to tell you I'm sorry for not cleaning my room. Later, I'm going to the beach. The problem here is the child is sorry, but is not yet willing to change. He has worldly sorrow. That is saying I'm sorry and not really meaning it. How many people say you're sorry to your boss and not really mean it? How many people say you're sorry to your spouse and not really mean it? How many people say you're sorry to your kids and not really mean it? Is that really not worldly sorrow? Step three, go, please forgive me. So the son has not cleaned his room. He tells his dad for some reason, I feel guilty today. Will you please forgive me? I know what I've done is bad. Dad thinks for a minute and says, sure son, I'll forgive you. Son says, great dad, thanks. I feel good not to feel guilty anymore. Later, I'm going to the beach. One must be convicted of that sin to truly be forgiven. Do we know when we are sinful? Most of the time when we're sinful, we don't read those parts of the Bible that pertain to us. We skip over those. We skip over whatever that sin that we're working on. We skip over that part of the Bible because we don't want it to be slapped up into our face. Step four, God cleanse me. The son approaches his dad. I'm not cleaning my room. <clears throat> I feel different today. Please let's wipe the slate clean. Let's start over. I've seen my wrongs. I am truly sorry for how I offended you. Please forgive me. I want you to cleanse me of all my past wrongs. Dad's response is quick. I would love to forgive you and remove the record of your wrongs. The son says, great, Dad. I'm going to clean my room. He has his eyes opened. To see your sin will not harm you, but to see your sin and live with it will cause great destruction in your life. Step five, God empower me. The son goes back to dad and says, Dad, I would love to start my room, but I have no idea where to start. I don't have no garbage bags. I don't have no gloves because there's a lot of funky stuff in there. I don't want to, I don't know what to do. Dad says, son, I have all the tools that you would ever need. All you need to do is ask, and I will be glad to help you. You see, the key to Christian growth is the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. If you truly repent and commit to God to do anything he asks, he will put in your path around your mind and on your heart, whomever or whatever you need. God will provide his perfect timing for cleaning up what your past character has left behind. <clears throat> and I'm going to speak on that a little bit about my past character. You all know my past character wasn't the best. It wasn't, I wasn't a good character. Sandy asked me the other day, um, yeah, the, other, what, the day it snowed and I was supposed to go to uh, work on a light for someone. Um, she asked me, well, what would you do 20 years ago? And I said, well, to be perfectly honest with you, I wouldn't have gone because it wasn't a paying customer. And she was like, Eric, that's not very nice. I said, well, you asked me. That's the truth. That's, I wouldn't have even answered the phone call because I already knew that they didn't want to pay me anything. Not saying that I didn't get paid, but I'm just saying. The past, the past person wouldn't want to help you this stage. The past person wouldn't be here to do the stage. I wouldn't even be in this building. I'm looking forward to doing the stage. I'm looking forward to working the law, you know, as uh, can, me and, me, the, the way me and Dave go back and forth, I can imagine when we all get in here, we're not going to get anything done. <laughs> yeah, it's all, all terms of endearment. 
I, I said the other day, it's a good thing that me and Dave get along, because if not, we'd be, the way we yell at each other sometimes, well, horse around. <laughs> um, it just is, it, it amazes me. But like I said, when we all get in here and start horsing around, we won't get anything done. So, I said all of that, all of that stuff to say this, that to repent really is about being, is, it's really about having courage. If you don't have courage, it's going to be really hard to repent. So it's really hard to take that first step in the dark. It's really hard to take that first step down the stairs when it's dark. Having courage is hard. It's hard to take that first. Courage begins with the inward battle. It's not really about the absence of fear. It's doing what you're afraid to do. Courage is, is mar making things right, not just smoothing things over. I was a good smoother when I was back in the back in the day. I could smooth over anything. I could sell an Eskimo, an Eskimo pie. <laughs> There's no quick fixes anymore. There's no shortcuts. Martin Luther King Jr. said this: "The ultimate measure of a man is not where he stands in moments of comfort and convenience, but where he stands at times of challenge and controversy." Where do we stand when we're not comfortable? How do we stand when we're not comfortable? Do we still stand for God? When we're getting picked on? When we're getting laughed at for being a Christian? Do we stay strong for God? Do we stay strong for the kingdom? Again, the kingdom's at hand. The kingdom's as close as you want it. Or as far away as you want it. The most important thing I can find about the Bible says about courage is we ought to be the basis of our courage. It is the promise of God's presence, power, and perseverance with those who have put their faith in him. That's what courage is. If we don't have courage with our faith, we won't have faith to have our courage. Did the chicken or the egg come first? Really dope. When Jesus sent out his 12 disciples, what did he tell them? <coughs> Preach the kingdom. That's what he told them. Preach the kingdom is at hand. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Now those 12 disciples, what did they do? They did just that. And what are we? What are we to do? Are we not to spread the kingdom? Are we not? Jared said that earlier. It's not all, it's all about his kingdom. The one. Bring one. Bring one is spreading the kingdom. Bring one to bring one to bring one to bring one. <laughs> that's a lot of math, but that's a lot more people in this church. If everybody brought one, that'd be a lot more people. There'd be a lot more people for the kingdom. But then again, it goes back to, do we only do the kingdom when we're happy? If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. We did that this morning. But when you're sad, do you still work for the kingdom? Do you still stretch for the kingdom? Do you still reach for God? Or well, is that the only time you reach for God? Is when you're sad, sad or upset. When you don't do it when you're happy. You gotta do it when you're both. That's the only way the kingdom grows. The kingdom grows when we're happy and when we're sad. That's right. uh, we were, um, my mom, rest her soul, she was, she's spreading the kingdom. She's like Fred. She talked to anybody about anything, about everything, all the time. And she didn't care where she was at or what she was doing. Sandy can attest to that. She just liked to talk to people. And she slip in every once in a while about the kingdom. And you wouldn't even know it. What, was, what just happened? And that's, sometimes that's the best way to slip it in. 
It's just slipping in without, you don't have to slap people in the face with it. You don't have to get up in people's face and, and be all about the kingdom and all about that's it. And being a Jesus freak is awesome, but you don't have to be all the time. Sometimes it's, it's, it's the quietness of us spreads. We're being watched all the time. The kingdom of heaven right now is being watched all the time by all the Christians and by non-believers. We're in a glass house. People in glass houses don't throw rocks. I've broken a lot of windows in my time from a lot of rocks. So that's a true statement. You should not throw rocks in the glass house. Or shoot a BB gun. <laughs> Billy Graham once said, when a brave man takes a stand, the spines of others are stiffened. That leads me to believe that courage, like kingdom, like the kingdom, is contagious. It spreads like wildfire. Whichever way the wind blows, is that the way you go? Or do you stand firm for the kingdom? Do you go like the wind? Do you go like the wildfires? The way the, way the wildfires move, move with the wind? Or do you go with what you firmly believe in, which is this? That's right. This is what I believe in. Amen. I believe this to be the, the, the definition of the kingdom. And it's how we interpret it of how we spread it. Because you can interpret every passage differently the many times you read it. I've read many chapters, many, many verses in, the, in this Bible, and they mean different things to me. Depending on what mood I'm in, depending on what mood my family's in, depending on whether I'm hot, whether I'm cold. So has the Bible grown? Has the verse grown? Or have I grown? I think it's a little bit of both. That's why they say this is the living word. We grow. We grow the kingdom. I'm going to leave you with this. I had a really short sermon tonight. And the reason it was short is because I had a whole other sermon wrote. And God, what day was that? Yesterday? God said, nope, that's not what you're preaching on. This is. So in Sunday school class today, we talked about um, those little hints you hear from God, and those little things you hear from God. I'm really sick of the two by fours. I don't like them anymore. I, I got one the other, the, the, wow, you're not talking about that. You're talking about this. And, and, and the, so sometime, the next sermon that I wrote that was extremely long, because I'm, I'm getting shorter on my sermons, was an extremely long sermon that I probably never would have ever got to, will listen to sometime. But that goes back to the kingdom. When Pastor Buddy said, the kingdom, you could talk about anything. I could talk about Noah. I could talk about Adam and Eve. I could talk about, you name anything in that Bible is the kingdom. So I had a good, a good, a good something. And that's not what I'm supposed to talk about. <laughs> so that's all I got for you tonight, folks. Um, let's lift all the prayer requests up. Um, to, to, to God. I can't remember all of them, but he does. Um, lift all of our pastors up to God. Pastor Austin, Pastor Buddy, Reverend Knight, Pastor Jared, um, myself. Let's just have a great week. And let's spread the kingdom. Um, that's all I got. Uh, Heavenly Father, I come to you with a humble heart. I ask that you bless each and every one of us that are here today. Um, the ones that couldn't make it, bless them. Put, them. put on their hearts for them to be here today. Um, please put lost people in our path so we can lead them to you, Lord. They have to know the lost. And we can help them with that. But only you can bring them to you. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you.